Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I'm going to talk about how you can create your very own solar system simulation in JavaScript. Well, this project is actually very close to my heart because this is one of the main reasons I got into coding. After seeing a similar kind of thing years ago, I actually came to know that uh, we can do literally everything with coding. So that's why I got into coding. So uh, getting further with this, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create solar system uh, based on uh, Newtonian gravity and in body problem. So uh, we are dealing with solar system. So the very first thing we should have is sun, right? Okay, so let me assume that this is our sun and for simplicity, uh, let me assume uh, only two planets. This is the planet one and uh, this is planet two. So what we want to do? We want to simulate the motion of these planets, uh, uh, motion of these planets around the sun, but using Newtonian gravity and in-body problem. So, uh, what is Newtonian gravity? Well, it actually says that uh, every object in this universe exert a force on every other object in this universe, which is the gravitational force, and which is proportional to. So let me just uh, assume that the the force the gravitational force is f and it's it is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square distance between them and if we want to write the equality sign then we must add a gravitational constant g and then we can say that we have two masses m1 and m2 and the distance between them is r so the gravitational force exerted by one uh, on the other will be g times m times m2 m1 times m2 divided by r squared so uh, in our case suppose uh, this is one planet and this is the sun so the gravitational force exerted by the sun on this planet and the gravitational force exerted by the planet on the sun is uh, let me just denote it by f and the direction would be like this so let me just assume that this is f1 and uh, the gravitational force between these two planets would be f2 so now what we are going to do uh, now we are also assuming that initially the speed of this planet was uh, something like that in this direction and we are going to find what will be the speed after some moment dt due to the action of f1 and f2 now to find the net force uh, exerted on this planet by the sun and the other planet we have to just add these two forces but remember that uh, these two forces are actually vector quantities so we cannot add them directly we have to first uh, resolve them into components that is let me assume the comp the sorry let me assume the axis are like this this is x axis and this is y axis so uh, first we are going to uh, break this forces suppose this is the force oops uh, wrong color uh, suppose this is the force in this direction and this is the force in this direction so what we are going to do we are going to first resolve the forces into its components so this force can be uh, written as the summation of vector sum of vector sum of these two forces and this force can be also uh, written as the combination of these two forces now to find the resultant force we just add the forces uh, along the components and after that after doing that we can find the force will be something like that now remember one thing that in this case f1 will be very very greater than f2 why so because the mass of the sun is very 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 large compared to the other planet so uh, this uh, f1 will have more effect on the result than f2 but i want to tell you that we are not going to neglect f2 here but because we are here dealing with n body problem so the concept of n body problem is we have to consider every single interaction between every two bodies so here we have three bodies okay so to find the velocity and the position of this body we need to consider all the forces that are being exerted by all the other bodies so here we are considering all the, the forces due to sun and the other planet okay so that is the concept of inverted problem 
and similarly if we want to find the the next velocity and position of this planet we have to consider the force between the sun and this planet and this two planets okay so now the question arises how can we find the next position and the velocity of this planet from the forces well so i would request you to remember uh, this formula which is uh, velocity is uh, equal to previous velocity plus acceleration times t so what is it suppose uh, after a time dt the planet moves here so we want to find this position and the velocity so what we know from the vector addition of these two force f1 and f2 suppose we get a resultant force this f so uh, we can find the acceleration due acceleration of this body from this formula acceleration is equal to f by m well uh, m is this just the mass of this body so from this we can find a and by uh, replacing t with dt and then by adding the previous velocity we can find the velocity at this point and it will be something like that and again we are going to perform the same steps which are to find the force exerted by the sun on this body and this body on this body so uh, by doing it repeatedly for every time frame we can simulate our solar system now uh, please remember that even uh, while we are adding the velocities we are adding the velocities vectorically that means we are first going to add the uh, x component of velocities that will be and uh, here will be the x component of uh, acceleration times dt and to similarly find the y component we are going to use this formula And remember, please remember that u x and u y are just the previous velocities. So we need to keep track of this also. And by doing and by doing this, you can see that we can simulate the path of every body in the system. Now, theoretically, you can put as many number of planets as you want. But uh, remember that that we are we are calculating interaction between every two pair or every pair of bodies. So that's why the time complexity increases very fast. Well, uh, theoretically, we can uh, very easily say that the time complexity of calculating the motions is O n squared. Why? Because you are calculating the interaction between every pair of bodies. So I recommend you to uh, run this program with less than 10 bodies. That will work just fine. In our case, for simplicity, we are just going to use three bodies, the sun or three or four bodies, the sun and some planets. All right. Well, another thing I forgot to mention is that uh, we need to find the angles also because to resolve the vectors into its component, we obviously need the angles. So to find the angles between the X component and the force or the Y component and the force, we have to use some trigonometry. So let me show you how you can use this. Suppose uh, we have two bodies here, two bodies here, and uh, this the position of this its center is x1 comma y1, and its center position is x2 comma y2, and the force gravitational force acting between them is along this line, the connecting the center line, the se the line which connects the centers. So we want to find the vector resolutions of this force Oops. so uh, suppose this is the f and this is the fx and this is f y the component of the forces along the axis so what we want to find is this angle right because by uh, knowing this angle we can actually resolve this force f into its components so how to find this angle well let me just denote it by alpha so to find this angle we are going to use some trigonometry some really basic trigonometry what are these so let me just uh, finish this triangle here the right angle triangle which are which is going to help us to find the angle so this is 90 degree and so this what is the value of this thing 
this is just x2 minus x1 and this side is just y2 minus y1 so to find the alpha we can easily calculate it as alpha is equal to tan inverse of I hope you are familiar with the inverse tangent function tan inverse of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 because this angle is equal to this angle and the tangent of this angle is just uh, this uh, perpendicular upon the base okay so so finally what we are going to use in our code well uh, we are going to use this formula to find the angle so that we can resolve our force in, in, into its component we are going to update the velocities using these two formula we are going to find the force using this formula and after doing that we are also going to uh, change our positions and px uh, would be px previous plus vx t and position y would be py previous plus vy t so these two formula we are also going to use so that was all for this conceptual part and in the next video i'm going to show you how you can code all this physics stuff so i really hope that you will gonna enjoy this video as much as i have enjoyed while creating that and if you are feeling a little bit more enthusiastic about creative coding then please like and share this video and please subscribe to normalize nerd and thanks for watching